One of the first things you'll see on the MyOpen Math page is a calendar for the course. If you click on any date, at the bottom will come up a list of things that are due on that date. Let's take a look at this rather ominous looking exam. So when we click on that date, details about this exam show up. And we see that this is exam one for classes that meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This quiz, on the other hand, we see that's the quiz over chapter two, and that's for all sections of the course. And let's take a look at this cluster of homework assignments. And we see the assignments that are due on that date. Now, since you'll probably want to actually do the assignments before they're do, let's go click on one of those assignments. That brings up some information about the assignment, the number of points possible, and the date that it's due. If you've already done some work, you'll get the button that says Continue Assessment. Otherwise, you'll get a button that says Start Assessment. So click on that button. And that'll take you into the first question of the assignment. So some important features here. The most important one is probably this square root zero over on the right hand side. This is access to a formatting tool, which will allow you to enter mathematical notation easily. Make sure that this is clicked on, that the button is green. Some other information we have, the score that we currently have, zero out of 20. The number of questions we've attempted to answer, also zero out of 20. The question that we're on, and a forward back button to navigate through the questions. We also have some other information, how much the question is worth, and how many tries we have to get this question correct. We see here that we only have one try to get this question correct, which makes sense because this is a yes or no question. Let's go ahead and throw in a random answer to this question. Now, after you've answered a question, it's very important to submit the question. And because we picked a random answer, we got it wrong. Now, the important thing here is getting an answer wrong is not the end of the story because we can always try a similar question. And so this will bring up a new version of the same type of question, which will answer and submit and try again. Now, maybe we want to see what the answer is, so we can jump to the answer. It gives us a warning, and this part's a little confusing. To actually see the answer, you need to click on this button here, which is the key. And when we do that, it tells us that this particular equation is nonlinear. Now we may want to review our notes on this topic, so let's try a different type of question. So we'll go to our question menu. And when we click on this, it'll bring up a drop-down menu that shows all the questions in the assessment. And we can scroll up or down the list as we want. So let's go to some random question. How about question five? Now, since this is not a multiple choice or true, false, or yes, no question, we do have three tries to get it correct. Now, if we click in the answer box, we'll pull up that math formatting tool. Again, make sure your math formatting tool is set to on. We'll type in an answer. And if you ever want to get rid of the math formatting tool, just click any place outside of it. So I'll go off into this big open space here and click. And again, remember to submit the question. And again, no surprise, the answer is wrong. Zero out of one point. Now we could try a similar question. But before you do that, notice that we can retry the question. And in fact, we still have two more tries. The difference here is a similar question will produce an entirely new question, which we'll have to solve entirely from the start. Whereas if we made a mistake in our computations, we might be able to fix it. So we might look over our work and realize what the correct answer should have been and fix it. Click in the answer box, correct our answer, click off to the side to get rid of the math formatting tool, and again, always hit submit question. Again, sometimes we might want to just jump to the answer, dismiss the warning, 
Again, to see the actual answer, click on the key. And many of the problems will have a detailed solution, so we can see how we get this answer of negative 3 sevenths. And maybe we'll look over our solution. And if we're ready to try again, we'll try a similar question. Often, you'll have some other options for help as well. So this written example produces a written example of a similar problem. And the video brings up a short video lecture on the topic. A very useful feature is that your work is graded as soon as you click Submit Questions. So if you bring up the question menu, you can see what scores you've gotten on which questions. And we don't need to finish the entire assignment at one sitting. So maybe there's some other important thing we have to do. We can leave in the middle of the assignment and come back later. And as long as we come back before the due date, we can finish the unanswered questions. So we can continue the assessment. The other thing you'll have to submit through My Open Math are the quizzes. So let's click on this Monday the 24th, which has a quiz on it. So down here at the bottom, the quiz information appears. And if we click on the title, we can access the quiz. So again, we see the basic information on the quiz, how many points are possible, when it's due. If we've already taken the quiz a couple of times, we have a recorded score and the scores on previous attempts. Now, since we've already taken this particular quiz a couple of times, we can retake the assessment. The important thing about the quizzes is they have a strict time limit. Once you open the quiz, the timer starts and there is no way to stop it, pause it, slow it down, or reset it. So we'll click OK to start the assessment. The quiz questions are set up very similar to how the homework problems are set up. So here we see the number of points that are possible on the problem, how many attempts we have, the timer tells you how much time you have left, and again, you might want to verify that the math formatting tool is active. Now, after you type in an answer to a question, it is vitally important to click on the Check Answer button. This will submit your answer for grading. And like on the homework assignment, you have multiple tries to get the answer correct. So if at first you don't succeed, check your work and try again. Again, make sure that you click Check Answer still incorrect. So we'll check our work and try again. One important difference between the quizzes and the assignments is that on a quiz you do not have the option of retrying a similar question. Which means that once we've used up our last try on a particular question, we're stuck with whatever grade that we have. Now it's possible you might have to leave in the middle of a quiz. You can click out. If you try to do that before you've submitted the assessment, a little warning box will come up to remind you that this needs to be done. And all of your checked answers will still be recorded. The other important thing to remember is that the timer will continue to run down even if you don't have the quiz on screen. So if you come back later, if the timer hasn't expired, you can reopen the quiz and continue where you left off. Once you've answered all the questions you're going to answer, click Submit Assessment. A reminder that once you've submitted, you can't change your answers. Another warning in case you forgot to answer some questions. And your grade, which in this case is not very good. But if you don't like your grade, you can retake the quiz.